Guys. We see some clapping so, though, Ken. I don't want to interrupt you. I don't know if that's some good news here. Let's pop up the audio for just a moment. Yeah, pop up the audio. I saw somebody clapping. Words to the entire team in uh, in two of the machines at Superbab and here in the here in the uh, Mission Control. Uh, what an astounding effort! I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the on the surface and we are transmitting. And uh, welcome to the moon, Houston. Odysseus has found his new home. An excellent call, and this is our team of intuitive machines, mechanics, and their families, their friends, everyone who has Correct. sacrificed we so much to make it this to, uh, far. Stations. All right, Ken, while well, you were watching there with us, some great news as you saw everyone clapping. What exactly happened there? It was a matter of minutes before we got that good news. Well, uh, you know, as we said, there's a little bit of communications issues that there was some chatter that they were getting, getting a signal back from the moon, but that had to all be confirmed. So it looks like it has landed. They're, they're clapping. They're, they're getting a signal from the moon. And so uh, hopefully soon we'll get pictures. Um, it, it could take some time, but it, right now they are ecstatic. And so am I. I mean, it's, this is only the second commercial lander from the United States to attempt a landing. And now it looks like we've succeeded. And this one is at the South Pole exactly where we want to send the Artemis astronauts. Um, this is one of the landing zones. And so now it has about a seven day mission. It, and then it goes into lunar night. It's not expected to survive that. But I expect we'll be getting a lot more information very soon. And this real exciting, um, I met these students from Embry-Riddle here. And you know, they have this Eagle Cam experiment it deployed a little CubeSat deployed about 30 meters above the surface and it's looking back to take a selfie okay the first third person image of a landing of any place in the whole solar system from a from a human system so you know we should get that pretty soon i was speaking with the students they're hopeful if it worked they would get ex you know data within you know maybe a few moments or minutes or certainly within an hour or so um but it all depends on communication and and it all depends on how that CubeSat was deployed. Um, and, and it's rotating and hopefully the picture, the camera is, is, is pictured towards the lander. So we'll just have to wait and see, but preliminarily, this is real exciting. And Intuitive Machines has at least three missions with NASA, okay? There's like about a dozen of these CLPS missions, these commercial, lunar lander payload missions uh, that NASA has set contracts with with the various companies. So if this worked, that's really exciting because it means intuitive machines can go ahead with their second mission, and that's going to have a little tiny rover on it, uh, you know, kind of like the size of the cell phone maybe. It looks extremely small, but that would be deployed along with some NASA payloads. So, um, so the future looks bright. Artemis doesn't completely depend on the success of these commercial missions, but if they work, it will be extremely helpful. And another thing that's on here is a laser retro reflector. So that is beaming back. When you, when you point a laser towards this spacecraft landing site, it'll beam back, um, it will reflect back the laser light and they'll be able to determine exactly where this lander is. And then in the future, if they wanted to, they could do precision landing and land exactly in the, in the same spot right nearby with this laser retro reflector. So a uh, lot of exciting things are happening. So and you know, exciting. we need more information, but right now it looks really great. And I was there with the students, I was there at the launch and you know, I'm a scientist. And uh, if we can get that to work and we can find that water, we can live off the moon because we have hydrogen and oxygen we have air to breathe water to drink and rocket fuel so it'll make it much cheaper to send our astronauts in the future to go to the moon and we're going to stay not just to plant a flag we're going to stay and the chinese are hot on our heels so we really need to succeed and hopefully the congress will support nasa president biden's doing a great job supporting nasa the Congress has to come through with funding. So hopefully that will work.
Your order was delivered to the moon. Yeah, yeah there it is from NASA. <laughs> Absolutely Fantastic. incredible, Ken. Yeah, I was going to say NASA just put this out that your order was delivered to the moon. So much excitement landing at 623 Eastern and bringing NASA science to the moon's surface. And Ken, I want to leave you with this. It's been 52 years since this last happened. Why did it take so long? And now to see it finally happen again. I mean, you can just sense the excitement in your own voice, seeing the cheers erupt inside of the room there of the NASA broadcast. What does this mean for the future if we just had to sum it up here at the end? Well, we can go forward with Artemis it, with even more confidence now. But, you know, why haven't we gone back? Well, we should have never stopped. That was the Congress and the President Nixon at the time canceled it. The Congress didn't, didn't pursue. And right now, you know, we're at a critical path pathway with uh, with the whole federal government could shut down in a few weeks if the Congress doesn't come to some agreement with the president. So as in the past, the funding was cut. And right now that uh, that funding is being cut again, which I think is really the completely wrong approach. OK, NASA needs to be funded. Science needs to be funded. If we're going to stay competitive and ahead of the Chinese, we need to push forward. We cannot retrench. And that is the decision facing us in the past, and it's facing us right now again. We're in another space race with China. And if we don't go, they're going to go. So that's pretty clear. Well, today has been such an exciting day to watch all of this happen as the lunar lander has reached the moon successfully. Ken Kramer joining us here, space journalist and founder of Space Up Close. Ken, it's been great having you on, explaining to our viewers what we were watching and to see this result in a success. Thank you. If I could just say one more thing, I was, you know, I was a kid with Project Apollo and I've been waiting 50 years to go back. So it's it's extremely exciting. Our country can be very proud of what we're doing. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Ken, thanks so much. Really appreciate your time here. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> bye, Ken. Thank you.